Yeah, we back. Now, today, man, I got to throw some haymakers, bro. I got to throw some haymakers, man. Now, take a look up on the screen. Not wasting no time. Let's jump right into it. You'll see I got a comment on one of my recent videos about Tariq Nasheed and Burner Boy. As you already know, the controversy surrounding that whole scenario. But this brother came into the comment section. You know, one of the, one of the Tariq Nasheed supporters that I haven't blocked from the channel because I really don't know because he, he seems like a decent brother, right? He seems like a decent brother, so I haven't blocked him. But anyways, he came into the comment section and said this. Burner Boy was out of pocket. Why make a dumb statement? As a black American, I was offended. Besides the bad analogy, Tariq is right. Black Americans know they can connect internationally, but right now, we need to focus on what's going on here in the United States of America. Now, in case you didn't know, he's talking about a recent viral video where Burner Boy was doing an interview and he had made a certain statement trying to connect with the diaspora. Now, a lot of people have been running with a headline. If you take a look up on the screen, take a look at this inflammatory and sensationalized headline by The Guardian. A lot of Tariq Sheet supporters on Twitter are running with this headline, not even trying to read the entire article, but we're going to get into that a little later. But as you can see, this is what they're running with, and this is why they're so offended and up in arms. The headline reads, brothers in the United States have been stripped of their knowledge of self. Now, I mean, what Runner Boy said is nothing different than what has been said by teachers in the past, like Malcolm X, like Minister Louis Farrakhan, like Marcus Garvey, like what Martin Delaney, like many of the master teachers, what John Henry Clark, many of the master teachers that uh, Tarina Sheed loves to venerate and, and pedestalize. They've said similar things, but now because for whatever reason, we got an agenda or we got a narrative we got to push. Now everybody is up in arms about something that's already an accepted and documented absolute fact, something that has already been taught from previous scholars in the past. And if you go to Tariq Nasheed's hidden blockbuster video store, the same master teachers that he has up hanging up on the walls, they said similar things in the past. And we venerated them for those statements. But now we want to crucify Burner Boy for repeating something that has been repeated throughout the ages. Anyways, let's continue. Let's take a look at the article itself. Let's not get carried away by a headline like unintelligent human beings. Let's actually read what the article says. The article says, starting from the top, the only way we can move forward is if we all know that Africa is our home and make sure that our home is a place that is respected. Burner Boy believes there's something deeper at work when it comes to the popularity in the UK, when it comes to his popularity in the UK. Most of the people from the UK, if not all the black people from the UK and the people of color, they all know where they're from. They know exactly where their roots are. This, he says, makes it easier for people to tune into his wavelength. It took longer for his music to find an audience in the United States. He says it's a consequence of African Americans not having the same close connection with Africa. Unfortunately, the brothers in the United States have been stripped of their whole knowledge of self, he says. So it's a bit harder for them, you know. When he collaborated with the U.S. rappers YG and Future, he said he was bringing my brothers home. Now, take a look up on the screen. You'll see a tweet that was a response to that headline. This guy says, says the person whose country is younger than some of our grandparents or parents. Now, I'm assuming he's talking about Nigeria. Well, the ethnic groups in Nigeria go back damn near like a thousand years. So I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. Unless you got a thousand year old parents or some shit. But like I said, these niggas don't know shit about... Anyways, let's continue, bro. Like I said, you can't really expect much from anybody who follows Tariq Nasheed, bro. You can't really expect much of any historical knowledge, of any, you know, groundbreaking intellectual co contributions. Like, niggas is slow. Let's continue. Now, what sparked off this entire debacle was Burner Boy doing an interview, and he spoke about the importance of the diaspora connecting with the African continent as a home base for networking, business, and just collaboration. And instead of that statement becoming the headline that everybody ran with, everybody ran with this other bullshit headline. But then again, what can you really expect from the followers of Tariq Nasheed? They got an agenda, they got a narrative, they got a push by any means. Now today, I'm gonna address the brother in the comment section, and we're gonna talk about the benefits of a nation or a group of people strengthening its international relations while also focusing on building itself up domestically because apparently the brother believes that you either gotta focus on your domestic situation or you gotta focus internationally. Apparently he believes that black men do not have the intellectual capabilities to walk and chew gum at the same time. And in this video, I'm gonna prove him wrong. Now, let's get into it, man. Now, in this video, I'm gonna address black Americans as a nation because they are a nation within the nation. Now, of course, the followers of Tariq Nasheed don't see it that way. They see themselves as part of the greater United States empire, right? They, they see themselves as part of the, the US hegemonic force across the world, but you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna address them as their own independent sovereign nation in this video. Many nations face a common dilemma, right? Should they focus on building themselves up domestically or strengthening their international relations? The truth is these two goals are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they work hand in hand and the most powerful nations in the world, including the United States. We're gonna use the United States as an example because we know y'all boys love the United States so goddamn much. The United States, they're able to focus on both at the same time, domestic politics and international relations. As we already know, 
Burna Boy is outspoken about the importance of African unity and cooperation between the continent and the diaspora. As part of his brand, Burna Boy sees it as his mission to help bridge this gap and promote a reconnection. Of course, most Reading Street supporters have no interest in connecting with anyone beyond the borders of the United States. So in my opinion, it doesn't matter if Burna Boy was more articulate in his approach. At the end of the day, there's a growing faction among the black population in North America that has decided to tether themselves to the wealth and power of white American men, win, lose, or draw. And that's a fact. Many people from this faction, they see no value and they have no interest in spreading their wings beyond the borders of America. And they need to be honest about that instead of trying to intellectualize the reason why they have an isolationist mentality. The overall message of Burner Boy's statement was the importance of black people having an international mindset in order to compete economically and politically in a globalized world. But many people decided to run with the sensationalized headline to confirm whatever bias they were already holding. Now, for those of y'all who haven't seen the video, go back in my catalog a few days back. I believe the video was entitled to read the sheet versus Burner Boy. And you can see that video that I'm talking about where Burner Boy essentially said, just like the Chinese, just like the Europeans, just like the Israelis, they have a home base, a home base that can serve as a hub that they can launch different projects out of a hub to tap into resources, a hub to connect, things like that. Go back and watch that video. And instead of running with that headline, they decided to run with some other bullshit. But anyways, let's continue. It's already been a well accepted fact that many blacks in the diaspora have lost much of our connection to the continent. Even in countries like Haiti, where I'm from, many of our cultural practices inherited from the continent are still seen today, but over 95% of Haitians are devout Christians and our educational system is Eurocentric in nature due to the influence of the Catholic Church. Therefore, many of us are educated upon the foundations of European teachings, just like all other groups in the diaspora. And I wouldn't get insulted if Burna Boy directed his message towards Haitians or any Caribbean people or whatever, because many of those same points can be applied to any group in the diaspora, because none of us took harsh measures to restore and maintain our pre-colonial cultures after slavery was over. For example, take a look up on the screen. You'll see a tweet that reads, after defeating and expelling the Moors, Spain banned Islam and everything related to it. They outlawed the Arabic language, Arabic names and clothing, and forced everyone who had converted to Islam to convert back to Christianity. Africa should have done the same after colonization. And this also can apply to every group in the diaspora. And why do I say that? When the Europeans drove out the occupying force, they took harsh measures to eliminate the culture of the occupying force in comparison to black people who doubled down on European culture and teachings and passed down the same garbage to our children to the point where now in the present day, the indoctrination is irreversible and the damage is damn near permanent. And if you ask me, I think the FBA crowd should be able to forgive Burner Boy for not being the most articulate in delivering his message because somehow they found the ability in their heart to forgive Tariq in his previous occupation as a pimp on the damn street, a fucking pimp slash human trafficker. Last time I checked, Burner Boy never forced any FBA women into a life of prostitution, putting them down on the streets of Los Angeles and forcing them to sleep with a bunch of white men, Mexican men, and everything in between in order to make a dollar. But somehow Burner Boy is the villain when the only thing he's guilty of is promoting unity among black people worldwide and making music that black people can enjoy. So if you ask me, Burner Boy is more valuable as a black man in the overall big picture if we measure both men up in terms of their power and influence, Tariq Nasheed is essentially worthless compared to Burner Boy. And I'll stand on everything I said. Give a fuck what a nigga think about it. That's a fact. If we gotta choose between Tariq Nasheed or Burner Boy, nigga, I'm throwing Tariq Nasheed in the fucking garbage can, nigga. First of all, have any of y'all listened to Tariq Nasheed's music when he was a rapper back in the day? Bro, I ain't never heard some shit so goddamn garbage. Now, y'all know, at the end of my videos, I play I play a song. That's my song right there. Bro, I could run laps around Tariq Nasheed in terms of musical musical talent, bro. I mean, I got more talent in my goddamn left toenail than Tariq Nasheed got in his whole damn body, bro. Like, nigga, stay out the recording studio, Tariq. You fucking trash, nigga. Now, let's continue. Now, why do I say Tariq Nasheed is essentially worthless compared to Burner Boy? First of all, you a goddamn pimp. Pimps prioritize their own interests over those of others. Pimps are interested in making money, and they'll do whatever it takes to achieve that goal, even if it means exploiting and harming others. As we can see, Tariq Nasheed, a master of manipulation. This behavior and personality trait alone makes Tariq untrustworthy compared to someone like Burner Boy, in my opinion. And the same exact tactics that Tariq was using back when he had FBA women selling their bodies on the street for profit, he uses those same methods of manipulation to radicalize and emotionally trigger his fan base for his own financial gain. And if blacks in large numbers began to switch to a more international mindset and began to become and began to be more industrious, there will be there will be no market of victim-minded followers that he can tap into and exploit to pay his bills and feed his family because we'd be too busy actually building shit and getting shit popping and getting money and, and doing amazing things. We wouldn't be sitting around on YouTube listening to that bitch-ass nigga. Now let's continue. Let me debunk the brother's comment when he said that, you know, we got to focus on what's going on here in the United States and then we can focus internationally as if black men cannot walk and chew gum at the same time like all other groups of men. 
First of all, nations focus simultaneously on both their domestic politics and their international politics because these two areas are interconnected and they affect one another. Domestic politics involve governing and addressing issues inside the country, issues such as the social situation, the economy, education, healthcare, law enforcement, etc., etc. International politics involve relations with other nations, such as trade, diplomacy, military alliance, and global institutions. Every nation around the world focuses on both domestic and international politics at the same time because these areas are not mutually exclusive, like I said before. For example, a country that invests in education and innovation domestically can become more competitive internationally, attracting investment and creating jobs. Similarly, a country that maintains strong international relations can benefit from certain trade agreements, military alliances, and strategic partnerships. And that right there is really what Burning Boy was talking about, strategic partnerships among men who share similar interests. But of course, we got to run with the headline like a bunch of women at the end of the day, bro. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not calling the brother that commented a woman, but to read the sheet followers tend to be more on the feminine, emotional, reactionary side of the game. You know, not really too masculine, you know, very feminine in their reactions, you know, fly off the handle, emotional outbursts, similar to women. You know, I'm not going to, you know, dive in deeper than that, but let's continue. An international orientation in politics can be beneficial for a country because it allows for cooperation and collaboration on global issues. In a globalized world, many issues require collective action and global solutions. An international orientation allows a nation to be involved in shaping the global agenda, influencing global institutions, and promoting their values and interests on the world stage, which goes way farther than anything that can be accomplished from your hometown or your local neighborhood. Men are competing against each other on a global level. We're not competing from neighborhood to neighborhood like a bunch of gangbangers, all right? We're competing on the international battlefield like men of power, men of big affairs, like men of means, okay? We're we, we talking big boy shit. We're talking big boy status on this channel, you know what I'm saying? And to drive my point home, I'm going to use the United States as an example because y'all boys love the United States. Y'all love Uncle Sam so goddamn much. So let's talk about the United States, man. The United States is an excellent example of a country that focuses simultaneously on domestic and international politics. Domestically, the United States has a complex federal system of government with three branches of government. The United States addresses domestic issues, but they don't ignore the important global relations with other nations. Internationally, the United States has created and controlled several global institutions, such as the UN, the IMF, the World Bank, NATO, to maintain its influence on the global geopolitical battlefield. For example, the United States has been a member of the United Nations since it was founded and has been a key player in shaping the UN's agenda and its priorities. The United States has also been a member of the World Bank and the IMF, which are strategic institutions to enforce their influence on the world stage. Additionally, the United States has been a member of NATO since it was created, which has provided collective military defense against all potential threats to all member countries across the world. The United States has built and maintained its power and influence globally through its complex relations with the nations of Europe from the colonial era until the present day. The U.S. has also been heavily influenced by European ideas, culture and institutions since it was founded. And even though the United States is the most powerful nation in the world today, they've never lost and they never disregarded their connection to their ancestors in Europe. During the colonial era, the United States was under the control of the European powers from Great Britain, France, Spain. European influence on the U.S. was primarily political and cultural as Europeans introduced new technology, ideas and beliefs into the colonies. After the American Revolution, the United States began to assert its own independence. They started to establish their own political and economic systems. In the mid 20th century, the United States played a crucial role in rebuilding Europe and maintaining its security against the Soviet Union. That action is the most shining example of the United States understanding the importance of maintaining an influence on the global stage and expressing solidarity among men of European descent who share common goals and similar ambitions. The United States also established military alliances with Europe through NATO, which helped to control Soviet aggression and maintain the security of Europe. Since the end of the Cold War, the U.S. has continued to maintain its influence in Europe through political and economic ties. The U.S. and Europe enforced their influence worldwide by the consistent propaganda of spreading democracy, protecting human rights, and encouraging free trade. The U.S. has also significant economic ties to Europe as Europe is a major market for U.S. goods and services. Now, time out. If the white man that y'all boys worship and adore so goddamn much and you say he's a genius and he got the, the most powerful nation and shit like that, that you helped him build and shit like that, he has an international mindset, but you think you're too good to have an international mindset. Listen, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take cues. I'm gonna take, you know, I'm gonna take direction from who's actually winning. All right? That the white boy winning. The white boy winning, and I'm gonna see I see the mindset he has. I see the mindset y'all have, and I can clearly see who's winning. So I'm not gonna take notes from somebody who follows Tariq Nasheed, all right? I'm gonna take notes from what the winners are doing. Now, let's continue. In my opinion, like I said before, man, 
Black men need to have an international mindset towards business because doing so can provide us with a range of benefits and opportunities that may not be available to us in a strictly domestic context. At the end of the day, y'all boys like to talk shit about black immigrants, but black immigrants got an international mindset. You're going to find black immigrants in every goddamn part of the world, bro. The United States, Canada, uh, Europe, France, Sweden, goddamn Ukraine. You saw black immigrants in Ukraine during the war. So black immigrants got an international mindset, bro. I'm just saying, my brothers in the United States, you got to catch up, bro. Anyways, man, let's get back into it. By thinking globally and engaging in international business, black men can expand our customer base, increase our profitability, and gain access to new technology and resources. One of the primary benefits of having an international mindset towards business is the ability to tap into a much larger market. By expanding our operations, this can be especially important for businesses that are struggling to grow in a domestic market that may be saturated or limited in their scope. Now, we already used the United States as an example. Let's use another group of men who also show the value of having an international mindset and cooperating with each other across across the world. Jewish men, for example. Jewish men have a unique ability to do business with each other internationally, regardless of their nationality, due to their shared history. For centuries, Jewish communities have been spread throughout the goddamn world, and this diaspora has created a sense of unity that transcends national boundaries or identities. There are Jewish Americans, Jewish Frenchmen, Jewish Haitians, Jewish Britishmen, similar to how we got uh, black Frenchmen, black Haitians, black Britishmen, black Americans. This shared history has allowed Jewish men to build trust and cooperation with each other, even when doing business in different countries and continents. This sense of unity among Jewish men can be seen in the way they form and maintain business networks. Jewish men often work together to create business opportunities, share resources, and support each other. This can be especially important in situations where they may face discrimination or hostility from the local population or the government itself. By relying on each other, Jewish men are able to navigate the challenges of doing business in different parts of the world. Black men can also benefit from developing a similar sense of unity when it comes to doing business internationally. Just as Jewish men have faced centuries of discrimination and hostility, black men have also experienced similar challenges throughout history. From slavery, colonization, we already know. Black men across the world have the same enemies as well as similar interests. But one thing we gotta remember when speaking of black people connecting internationally and having that base of power that Bernard Bo was talking about. It is important to recognize that not all black men may have the resources, opportunities, or the desire to pursue international business ventures. We understand that. However, for those who possess the skills, the knowledge, and the ambition to succeed in the global business world, developing an international mindset is a valuable asset. And to be honest, black men who are already operating at that level, I don't even got to tell them that. That's like beating a dead horse. They already know what time it is. They already know what's up. But for the brothers in the slow class that may not already know, we got to make it plain. We got to let it be known. First of all, in any group or community, it's typically going to be the most intelligent, the most ambitious, and the most driven individuals who are the most successful in building and maintaining business networks and connections. This is true for individuals of all races, not just black men. We're talking about those who possess a high level of intellect, strong work ethic, and strategic thinking are more likely to succeed in the competitive world of international business. I'm sure Burner Boy didn't mention that, but he should have said that, right? He should have said that. Listen, we're not, we're not calling all y'all dumbass niggas to connect internationally. Some of y'all got to stay in whatever neighborhood you came from, nigga. Stay in your homeland. Stay in your home country. Everybody ain't built for the major leagues, my boy. Everybody ain't built in the major leagues. Just like every white man isn't some captain of industry, the average white man is some out of shape bum with no money. Just like the average white man isn't Bill Gates, the average black man isn't going to be a legal dangote. We want the best and the brightest. I'm not a classist, but listen, the facts is the facts. Also, something else that we got to factor in, man, the image of the black man that needs to be improved on a global level, right? By fostering an international mindset among black men, we can help to challenge the negative stereotypes and perceptions about black men in the global community. By demonstrating our intellectual and entrepreneurial abilities on a global stage, we can break down barriers and create opportunities for ourselves and our future generations. A lot of these folks who have such a problem with what Burner Boy said, they don't even got the capability to contribute much of anything to anybody, right? And the black men that do have the power and the capability to contribute, they already have an international mindset. I didn't do a video about it, but Steve Harvey put out a video saying, Hey man, black men, black people, we got to have an international mindset. We got to connect with the continent. Steve Harvey, multi-millionaire media personality. Listen, black men of a certain level, of a certain echelon, they already know what time it is, right? Anybody following Serena Sheed, nigga, I already know you ain't on Steve Harvey level. So, like I said, I'm going to follow what the winners are doing and what the winners are saying. And what the winners are doing and what the winners are saying is more in line with what Burner Boy said. Way more than whatever bullshit to read sheet is talking about. And I already acknowledged on previous videos that Burner Boy wasn't the most articulate. But it seems that people are picking and choosing what to focus on because the overall message of his statement was the importance of black people having an international orientation in politics and in business. Similar to how other groups operate and cooperate on an international level. 
But somehow people try to twist what he said, twist his entire statement, and make it seem like Burner Boy was trying to insult somebody or antagonize the diaspora. When in reality, Burner Boy has been one of the main champions defending the importance of unity among black people around the world. Nothing Burner Boy said, like I said before, wasn't already said in the past decades ago from several teachers and scholars and even other musicians like Bob Marley. So at the end of the day, man, we can see right through the bullshit. Y'all got a narrative, y'all got an agenda, and regardless if Burner Boy came to you, got on his knees, and kissed your feet, you still would've kicked him in the goddamn mouth because y'all niggas don't got no love for anybody outside the United States. Y'all claim y'all do, but we see right through the bullshit. Y'all don't. Y'all don't. And we would respect it more if you just said, listen, we don't fuck with nobody outside the United States, right? And just start waving your American flag around and start banging your American flag like a gangbanger. We would have more respect if you were just honest, you know, in my opinion. But anyways, let's get back into it. We got to talk about how not only do we need the best and the brightest just in terms of intelligence and capability, but we need the best and the brightest in terms of black men who have the, the mentality necessary to compete. Black men who are not going to get overly emotional at a headline or a viral video and fly off the handle. Because at the end of the day, competing on a global scale, these other groups of men, they're not coming on no emotional bullshit. They're coming on business. They're coming to win. So if you're an emotional nigga and you can't keep your emotions in check to keep sight on the bigger picture, listen, you're not part of the best and the brightest, my boy. You're not part of the best and the brightest. Because in my opinion, in order to succeed at anything on a global scale, it's going to be important for black men to be calculated and level-headed when conducting business. This is because decisions and negotiations in business require a certain level of rationality. Which means you can't fly off the goddamn handle when you see a headline. You can't just get in your feelings when you see a viral video. You can't be so easily triggered and overly emotional from any minor misunderstanding when other groups of men are carrying out their long drawn out calculated agendas to secure their power for the next hundred years. And they're not coming on any emotion. They come in straight, strictly on business, coming in with the poker face, coming in trying to win. Other groups of men like the Asians and the Europeans, y'all know y'all boys love talking about, oh, oh, Tariq Nasheed followers love talking about, oh, the Chinese, the Chinese own Africa, the white man own Africa. Well, goddamn, of course he gonna own Africa. Yo, your bitch ass too scared to go over and take shit over, nigga. You scared, nigga. So of course other groups of men gonna take it over, nigga because you a bitch but luckily for us black men have a strategic advantage of having a deeper connection to certain parts of the world and due to the current geopolitical situation of today black men with american citizenship regardless if they're allegedly foundational or the children of immigrants we are in the best position to take advantage of what the world has to offer simply because we have proximity to three important things that hold a lot of weight and power on the global stage for example the american passport the american dollar and access to the american embassy for those of us who are american citizens we got a lot of benefits that come along with traveling and doing business around the world. One of the most significant benefits is access to the US dollar, one of the most widely accepted and stable currencies in the goddamn world. This provides a level of financial stability and flexibility when conducting transactions and negotiating deals abroad. Another benefit we got as black men with American citizenship, we have access to the American passport, a widely accepted and respected passport around the world. This provides easier access to certain countries and it can expedite the visa process in certain cases. Also, American citizens have the support and the resources of the American embassy when traveling in different countries. This embassy can provide assistance with a wide range of issues and provides a level of safety and security when operating in foreign environments. And I emphasize the importance of these three things because the average black man from any other black country does not have the same backing, does not have the same currency, does not have the same power in his passport than we do. So if we're sitting in the goddamn, you know, the United States with all these advantages and all these benefits and we crying and whining and complaining, then a lot of y'all niggas really ain't built to compete and built to win. I mean, what more, what more of a leg up do you need? But anyways, let's continue. In summary, man, all nations, all people can and should focus simultaneously on both their domestic politics and their international politics because these areas are interconnected. Like I said, they affect one another. An international orientation in politics can be beneficial for a country because it allows for cooperation and collaboration on global issues. An international mindset also allows you to influence and shape the global agenda and promote your own values and interests on the world stage. Me, myself, personally, I focus domestically on the affairs of the United States because I live here, I pay taxes here, and I do business here. I also focus domestically on the political affairs of Haiti and the Dominican Republic because I have family there and I have property there. I also focus internationally on global affairs with a special focus on African politics because in my opinion, all of this is interconnected. Trust me, black men have the intellectual capacity to walk and chew gum at the same time, just like all other groups of men. Just like the Jewish man, he focuses on American politics, he focuses on Israeli politics and the geopolitical landscape of the world. Because all of it affects his bottom line, it affects his standing in the world, it affects everything, bro. Everything. Intelligent men of all walks of life, we can chew gum and walk at the same time. We can focus on domestic affairs and international affairs, trust me. 
Trust me, you're not going to get hurt. It's not going to hurt you to do what all other groups of men are doing. Like I said, I only follow what the winners are doing. I cannot take any direction from Tariq Nasheed or any of his followers because y'all niggas ain't winning. Now, anyways, bro, it's your boy Never Card Desaline back in the Billy Yes Indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart to be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got Malice intentions, step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching me blocking my vision. Pay for the check cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They make a no hour with it. Wage I got business. This shit is an art and they could never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check. And I do it for sport Babylon falling I go to the source Packing my luggage And go overseas Shorty be with me And she so elite Shorty be chosen I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence Probably gonna murder me Don't fuck with brands Cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit And you're smacking their faces